Hey YouTube, this is Mark. In this video, I'll be going over some highlights from installing a Tremec Magnum transmission in my 69 Mustang. Over the past few months, my father and I have installed this transmission in the car. I've had the transmission for over a year and just now got around to installing it, but I wanted to have the transmission in the car prior to swapping engines. I mentioned in previous videos that I'm going to be building a new 351 Windsor engine for the car, so now that the transmission is in the car, I can start work on the engine. And in this video, I'll just be going over a few problems that I had with the install and things that I would do differently next time. I will say the transmission has totally changed the character of the car, the way the engine behaves, even with the RV cam that's currently in the engine. Um, it just wants to rev with this new transmission. Uh, wasn't the case before with the FMX. It was just kind of blah, even though it did have some power. So I think we're going to take one more rip through the gears of this clip, even though it lacks image stabilization, it might induce some nausea. It still sounds pretty good. Here the FMX has been removed from the car and here's a picture of the rear of the engine after the transmission has been removed and here is the new steel SFI approved flywheel in place. Here's a shot of the Magnum going in the car and the next photo is the transmission tunnel and the biggest problem I had with the installation was clearance in the tunnel with this tunnel brace shown here. And what happens is when you raise the transmission up, the shift plate, the red shift plate on the transmission will come in contact with this tunnel brace. To add to the problem, after bolting the transmission to the bell housing, I noticed it was tilted slightly towards the driver. And I thought maybe my motor mount was bad on one side of the engine causing it to tilt. But in fact, I, after doing some research, determined that the Quick time bell housing actually clocks the transmission about five degrees counterclockwise. And this was done to replicate the mounting position of a T56 in OEM applications and an SN95 Mustang. I think they did this to give a better shifter position by having the transmission tilted slightly towards the driver. But the problem that this actually creates is it decreases clearance in the transmission tunnel. Um, it makes the right edge of the red shifter plate come in contact with the tunnel brace. Uh, whereas if the transmission were actually melt, mounted level, you'd have, have about another half inch to an inch of clearance, I think. And so if you get a quote from a vendor to mount a Magnum behind a small block Ford in an older car, they're most likely going to list one of two quick time bell housings, either the RM8030 which is what I have, or the RM8031. And these are both 157 tooth uh, flywheel bell housings. The only difference being that the RM8030 has a nine o'clock opening for a clutch fork and the 8031 has a seven o'clock uh, opening. But in, in my case, I don't have a clutch fork, don't use a clutch fork. I have a hydraulic uh, throw out bearing. So the fork location doesn't really matter. But I did get a quote from three different vendors, and they all quoted me one of these two bell housings. And after installing the car, the transmission in the car, and finding that they clocked the transmission like this, I thought that was odd. So I called Holly. Holly owns QuickTime. I asked them, do you have a bell housing that will mount the transmission in a straight-up position? And they said they would look into it, and they'd get back to me. So they called me back pretty quickly. And said, yeah, we do have one. It's the RM8031-164. And so I did a little more research into this RM8031-164 bell housing. I found it listed on the website of an Australian company called Malwood Automotive. Got in contact with the owner, whose name is Malwood. You can see the email exchange between myself and Mal, where he indicates that this bell housing they had made by QuickTime in order to mount a Tremec Magnum behind the small block forward and mounted in the straight up position. Uh, one thing to note 
uh, that when you mount the magnum in a straight up position, the mounting pad on the tail of the transmission will then be tilted slightly um, so that you'll either need to machine the mounting pad to be level when it's mounted in a straight up position or I suppose you could put shims on one side of the transmission to take up the gap on the side that sits higher. Additionally the 164 in the part number uh, indicates that this is a 164 tooth flywheel bell housing so you'll have to get a 164 tooth flywheel and a larger clutch I believe you'll need an 11 inch diameter clutch as opposed to a 10 and a half inch clutch for the uh, that you'll need for a 157 tooth flywheel but if I had it to do over again I would start with this bell housing get a different flywheel different clutch since installing the transmission into the car and driving it, another problem that's resulted from having the transmission tilted is the shifter that came with my kit also has an offset of two inches and it hits into my leg in second gear. And this is kind of a problem when I'm turning the wheel, uh, the top of the wheel is tilted inward more than the bottom. And so when I'm turning the wheel, it will pin my leg between the steering wheel and the shifter knob if I'm downshifting from third to second. Um, so I either can't turn the wheel or can't shift into or out of second gear, which is kind of a problem. So I'm going to take this shifter out of the car and put one that doesn't have an offset to it that's just straight up. One other problem I had with the install, since this video is now morphing into one of complaints, is the transmission mount in the back. It's a Ron Morris mount. It's actually a nice mount, but it interferes with the parking brake cable on both sides so that if you mount it as intended it will interfere with your parking brake cable uh, so the solution for that was to take the brackets that mount to the frame rail the silver zinc plated brackets that you see here and flip them 180 degrees so that the slot is on the bottom and it will drop the transmission mount about an inch um, so that you'll clear your parking brake cable compensate for the lowered location I then had to shim the transmission up about an inch a better solution would be to use this American powertrain cross member it mounts at the stock mounting point on the frame and then swoops back to the mounting pad on the back of the transmission and appears to avoid any interference with the parking brake cables I've linked an American powertrains video in the description below that shows a Tremec Magnum installed in a 69 Mustang where you can see this cross member. An added bonus of this cross member is that it's $200 cheaper than the mount that came with my kit. One other thing to consider is that if you're swapping from an automatic car you'll no longer have your neutral safety switch connected so in order to start the car you'll have to complete that circuit. The Magnum doesn't have a provision for a neutral safety switch but I believe the TKX does. You could go the route of manual cars in the 60s where they didn't have a switch um, and you could, if you goofed, you could start the car in gear. But what I ended up doing was using a switch that mounts behind the clutch pedal. So when the clutch pedal isn't depressed, you can't start the car. When it's depressed, it completes the ignition circuit and allows you to start the car. Here's the switch that I used right here. It's uh, from a Hyundai Elantra, I believe. All right, what else? Here's some bonus footage that shows my McLeod clutch installed, uh, followed by some shots of the McLeod hydraulic throwout bearing. I think I forgot to mention that I did use Ron Morris motor mounts. Those were drop mounts that dropped the engine a half inch, gave me a little bit more clearance in the tunnel. But I think when I swap the engine, I'm going to pull the transmission back out as well, indent in that transmission tunnel uh, brace to get a little bit more clearance and allow me to move the transmission up a smidge to get a better driveline angle. I think I'm also going to link a video in the description below that talks about driveline angle and vibration. Uh, I found that pretty useful. Lastly, I will leave you with my price list, uh, everything that came with my kit. For those of you that are considering doing this yourselves and how much it cost, I think it was about 8000 altogether, including a $500 for the drive shaft um, and you could probably tack on another 10% with inflation since these prices are over a year old 
And thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.